Hey, welcome to another tutorial from Photoshop is Fun. Now today what I want to cover is a dodge and burn technique. This one's my favorite. There are a lot of different dodge and burn techniques out there, but this is the one I use the most in my own workflow, and I'll cover other um, styles later. Um, if you're not familiar with dodge and burn conceptually, essentially what it is, is it's a technique that came out of traditional photography where the photographer would go into the um, dark room and they would use scalpeling or precision techniques to go in and manipulate exposure levels within their photograph. So for example, if you overexposed an area, you could go in and darken it to balance it out. And if you underexposed in another area, you could go in and lighten it to balance it out. And that's essentially what we're going to do. What's great in the digital world is that we can do this with much more precision than you could do uh, traditionally, with much more accuracy, and we can do it in a non-destructive fashion, which is awesome if you want to tweak things down the road. So with all that said, let's jump straight into it and let's cover the basics. All right, so let me give you an example of what dodge and burn can do for a photograph. Now, let me just start with the caveat that I spend about two to three minutes max on this photograph to um, apply a dodge and burn technique, and I can already see problems um, with it. Now, I certainly wouldn't print this um, as is. I would go back and do more detailed work if this was a photograph that I actually wanted to print, and it's not, but that said, let me show you what dodge and burn does. So the top layer here, layer one, is my dodge and burn applied to um, the original. So when I turn it off, you'll be able to see um, the original photograph and how the colors came through. And you can see the sky isn't very blue, um, there's some exposure problems in the um, field behind, etc. But now when I turn on my dodge and burn, you can see that it brings color to the image and it um, darkens areas that were previously overexposed and it lightens areas that were underexposed. So let me do it one more time just to give you kind of the on and off of it. So there's the original. And there it is with some dodge and burn applied. And again, the sky is so much more blue. The uh, uh, browns in the horse's face are much nicer when the uh, dodge and burn is applied. So think about dodge and burn in these terms when you're looking at your own photographs. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, kill this layer so that we can start from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get you set up with some foundational elements so that you can not only use Dodge and Burn today, but that you can add it to your workflow and use it in the future and access these things all with one click of a button. So let's go ahead and get started with that first. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to create a neutral gray color that we can access all the time because um, neutral gray is going to be essential to this technique. So we want to add it to our palette. So if you do not have um, your swatches palette open like I do here, then what you'll want to do is go up to the window menu and go down to swatches and that should expose it. And then what you want to do is click on your foreground color and we're going to create a neutral gray. So we're going to go to our RGB, our red, green, and blue, and we're going to change the values to 128 for each. And that is essentially a neutral gray color. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. And that is our foreground color now. So we're going to go ahead and click um, the add to the palette. And we're just going to call this um, N gray or whatever you want to call it and then OK. And as you can see, it added it right here. So the last piece in setting up our Dodge and Burn Foundation is to create an action script. And if you're not familiar with action scripts in Photoshop, essentially what they are is a programmatic way of automating repetitive tasks. And they're really nice for things like Dodge and Burn. So the next time I bring in a new photograph, I can basically just click a button and it'll set up uh, my environment for Dodge and Burn and I can get going right away and I won't have to do these steps over and over. So to get started with your action script, what you want to do is go up to the window menu and click actions and that will expose your actions palette. And you can see here that Photoshop ships with some presets, but I'm going to go ahead and close those so that they're not distracting. And I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call them my actions just so that I can separate them from what ships with Photoshop. I'm going to click OK. And then within my actions, I'm going to go ahead and create a new action script. And I'm going to call this one Dodge and Burn so that the next time um, I want to do Dodge and Burn, all I'll have to do is select it. And I'm going to click Record. And what that means is essentially everything I do from here on out in Photoshop is going to be recorded as a step. And until I click Stop, um, I mean everything's just going to be captured. So what I want to do is go back over to my layers palette and create a new layer above my base layer. And I want to make sure that that neutral gray color is selected as my foreground color over here. And then I'm going to select my fill icon. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this top layer with neutral gray. 
And then I'm going to select the blending mode, overlay. And what overlay will do is essentially colors that are darker than the 50% gray and we'll be using black um, will be multiplied and colors that are lighter, um, which we're going to be using white, will be screened and create a overexposure or more exposure. And um, that's essentially what we're going to do. So we've set up our environment. We have the um, neutral gray layer above our base layer. So now what I want to do is go ahead and click stop. And now I have a dodge and burn action right here. And let me show you how this works. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw away my dodge and burn layer so that we can simulate how this will work when you um, first bring in a photograph into Photoshop and want to do dodge and burn in the future. And what you'll do basically is bring in your photograph and you can see the base layers here and then go up to window actions or click the um, play button over here if you see that and that'll open up the actions palette and then select dodge and burn and then just run it which is this uh, play button right here and as you can see over here it automatically created the layer above it and added the neutral gray fill and that's basically how that works so I'm going to go ahead and close my actions um, palette and then we're going to get started with the actual dodge and burn technique as I mentioned earlier, the two colors we're going to be working with for dodge and burn are black and white. So what you want to do is reset your foreground color and background color to black and white. And to do that, you go ahead and click on this default icon here, and that will reset them. And then we'll toggle between the two, depending on what our needs are, by clicking on this double arrowed icon right here. And you can see it switches them back and forth. We're going to use a brush tool, so select your brush tool. And then we need a soft brush, so you'll click up here and make sure that your hardness is turned all the way down. And then your brush size is here, and you can adjust it there, or you can use your bracket keys to adjust your brush size. Now, I go back and forth with my brush sizes all the time, so I use the um, shortcuts on the keyboard. I find it to be a lot faster. And then lastly, the thing I want to draw your attention to is the opacity levels. Now, opacity is the intensity of your stroke, and you're going to generally want it to be down between 5 and 10%, especially when you're working with people. Um, for skies, though, it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 100%, usually. And that what that'll do is it'll bring out the dark, deep blues of your sky. And let me give you an example of how this works. Now, if I were doing a print or professional version of this, um, I would go ahead and mask out the horse's um, ears and a lot of the trees in the background to make sure that my brush strokes only touched on the sky area so, th so that the technique didn't bleed into other things. But because I'm just showing you the technique and um, I want to show you how powerful it is, I'm just going to do a sloppy version of it. So I'm going to set my opacity actually to 70 and I'm going to be burning so black is selected as my foreground and then I'm just going to go ahead and um, lay down some brush strokes over the sky and you can see right away the blues start to pop and um, really bring the picture to life and uh, now as I'm getting closer to edges down here because I'm not masking things out I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity down to about 20-ish, 25% and then I can go over these areas right here and it'll look a lot more natural than if I would have left it up in the 70s and um, a smaller brush will do me some good as well and again you, you get to see the idea and how powerful that technique is um, so just to show you the difference if I were to turn off my mask there you go now the picture is starting to come to life okay so let's move on to the horse Okay, so for the horse's face, what I'm going to do is go ahead and zoom in, and I can either use my zoom tool over here or control plus key, which is what I'll do because it's faster. And um, then again, make sure your brush is selected. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 14%, and um, I'm going to uh, switch my foreground color to white because I want to dodge or lighten on this side of the horse's face. So with that selected at 14%, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see right away with just little strokes, um, it lightens that area and uh, it really starts to show more detail. And I'm going to go ahead and do part of this side of his body as well. And then I'm going to move over to the other side. And I want to make this side of the face, I want the browns and the fur um, to uh, be a lot richer and darker and have a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to switch back over to burn, which is black and um, still at 14%, I think that'll work. I'm going to just start to um, click in some of those areas where I think that it'll really start to pop. And you can see right away that it does. And then I'm going to switch this down to uh, about 10%. And I'm going to, um, whoops, make my brush a little bit smaller. 
and I'm going to go along the edges of where the uh, white fur meets the um, brown so that I can add contrast to that with a burn technique and that just kind of makes that pop a little bit more and then I'm going to do uh, something similar right up here and I also want this leather um, to uh, pop a little bit and then lastly I'm going to do the nostrils because they're kind of flat and colorless for the most part so I'm going to go ahead and stroke over those with my uh, burn tool and um, I might even uh, just for fun kind of go over the fence here it has some interesting colors in it and um, now let me show you the difference um, again we just did this really quick but just you can kind of see right away that um, it starts to pop uh, when you add dodge and burn to your photographs and it's a really nice technique to use now if I were to add my vignette uh, technique to this and then do um, uh, you know again mask out some of these things it would really look nice in the end it would be a great picture for the most part um, of a of an uninteresting horse looking right at you so anyway that's the dodge and burn technique pull in your own photographs see how it works for you and um, happy photoshopping